not Jody, as you can see. But when I give a message in his place today, he's I think visiting his mom this weekend. I thought about giving it Jody style, uh, but I don't know enough about cattle or hay or trucking or anything like that to do it. So I'll just I think I'll do it my style today. But uh, it, hi Jody, if you're watching. Um, I gave part of this message um, sort of last week in that testimony, and I know there were some people who are here today who didn't hear it, so I'll go over it briefly. Um, essentially, in short, um, I'm working to produce a show at work, a live stream show. It's a, it's a high school football show, so, th so throughout the week we do previews of games and stuff, but on Friday night, like 10, 15 or so, they do like a game recap. So obviously they knew going in, like I'm not gonna be there for that one. So they brought in somebody that, that we knew that had produced some stuff before, that's a friend of ours, to come in and take my place on, on Friday evenings. Um, and so we had contacted him and you know he, he came over to kind of go through some of the things. And uh, the first thing that he said, and, and I've known this, this kid for five or six years or so, so he knows about our faith and that we're weird and we go to church on Saturday and all that type of stuff, which is strange to them. But he's a, a youth pastor at a local church. And um, the first thing out of his mouth when we sat down in my office to go over some of this stuff was, uh, so I was looking at your church's website, or I was looking at your website, is what he said, um, and he wanted to know, he just said, what do you guys believe? And I just said, that's a pretty broad uh, question, what do you mean? So he kind of went down the line of like, well, do you believe in uh, Jesus? Do you believe he came in the flesh? That type of thing going down the line. And then he said, well, what about the Sabbath? And I remember uh, my reaction was, well, what about the Sabbath? Just to kind of see what he thought about it. So we, we went through, uh, you know, why I believe, what I believe, just briefly. And uh, I remember he said, I may not do it, but I'm good with it, which I've heard before. It's just like, I'm good with you doing it. I just, you know, I'm not really into it type thing. Um, let me see, but just this young man, and, and I believe he's sincere, and there are others that I work with that are uh, youth pastors as well, and people that I know who are in the ministry um, in local churches, and it seems like, and I see them post on Facebook, and I hear them talk about things, it seems like there's always something new on the horizon for them to snag people, that's like, that's the goal, which is admirable, it, it, in the context that if you're snagging them to get them into the faith, but as we know, and we, we've heard it many times before, the, the church is full of unsaved people for a reason. They get them in, and that's pretty much the end of it. Every, everything that they do, everything that I see, and I've been to some of these places too, um, everything that I see, it's focused on getting people in, and then that's it. Like every program is about getting people in, not about discipling them or bringing them into the faith or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I wrote down a metaphor here. It might be a strange one, but I was thinking about it last week. It would be like a restaurant owner going out and promoting their business, um, like crazy, grand opening, like trying to get everybody in. Um, and then they get all these people in packed house, and then they never actually serve any food. They have photos of food. And they've talked about it, and that's why people came, you know, it's like, hey, look at all this great stuff, but they don't actually serve anything. Um, it's, it's not fulfilling any other purpose but to get people in. The purpose of the restaurant is to feed people, but they don't, which is what a lot of these places do. Um, and I understand that's not true for, for every church. There are good things. There are things that I admire even about the, the people I'm talking about. Um, but again, it's, it's to what end? Do they get people in, you know? Um, you know, Christianity, mainstream Christianity, uh, is in the state it's in for a reason, and it's not for lack of programs to get people in the doors. I can guarantee you that. Um, but, and I wrote here, I think it's simply put, it's this, that you have to let the gospel do its work. You have to let the gospel do its work. You can get people in, but if you don't actually preach the gospel and let it do what it does, then it, it doesn't. None of it matters. Um, turn with me to First uh, Corinthians chapter two, beginning in verse one here. It's kind of Paul talking about his approach when he came to these new brethren. Verse one, and I, when I came to you, brothers 
did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers. Whoop. Jumped. or are the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would, have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received the Spirit of the world. We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are a folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one, for who has understood the mind of the Lord as, so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. There are so many things to point out in that chapter that illustrate the way that the Apostle Paul preached. Um, if there was ever anyone qualified to be able to preach over someone's head, it would be Paul. Um, and we have plenty of evidence that tells us that he can do that. If you read some of his letters, there are some things that you may never understand, you know. Um, but when he came to the Corinthians, he brought the gospel. That's what he brought. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't break out his big letters of deep things of the Spirit, he brought the gospel and pretended to know nothing else for a reason. Um, not a teaching on some deep subject, uh, <laughs> not a laser light show or a paintball party or anything like that, um, which I don't mind those things in the right setting, but again, like what we were talking about before, it's another, he didn't bring a program for them to get in. He brought them the gospel and whoever received it, received it. Turn with me to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Begin at verse 1 here. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, though we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts and give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So obviously we can't decide who can hear and who can't, who's spiritual and who isn't. Um, and I read an article last week um, that made a good point. Um, and the writer asked in this article, did you receive the gospel the first time you heard it? And I know that there are those who have, but for most of us, that's not the case. I know it certainly wasn't in mine. I grew up hearing it. And there are people who hear pieces of it for their whole lives and, and don't come into the faith for, for decades. We don't know where, where those seeds are. Um, but, you know, the, again, the gospel had to do its work in me. So, again, you, ha you have to let the gospel do its work in people um, and not to water it down so that it's, easier to swallow because then it doesn't do anything it doesn't have its effect 
if you give only a part or a part that's kind of molded into what you want it to be. Um, you know, when we came out of Worldwide um, and into this, into this faith, I was you know, obviously very young, um, but the gospel even so was something that I had heard countless times, and especially after the fact when we kind of came more into the things of the Spirit. So again, it wasn't for lack of, of hearing it for me. It was about the timing and, and for the gospel to do what it needed to do in me. Um, let's turn to uh, Acts chapter 2. We get to verse 22. I'm going to read a pretty good portion of this here. Verse 22, Men of Israel, hear these words. <clears throat> Jesus of Naz Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Verse 29, Brothers, I say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he would not set one of his descendants, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Verse 36, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to, calls to himself. And with many words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation, so that those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. So Peter is just laying this out as purely as he possibly can. Um, you know, he starts out in the first verse that we read, accusing the crowd that he's talking to. I don't know how many people, I think it may say earlier in that chapter, but quite a few, um, thousands, we know that at least, um, accusing them of murdering Jesus in front of all these people, which is a pretty heady thing to do. Um, if you were trying to drive people away and have them go find some stones to throw at you, that, that's a surefire way. That's, that's the way to do it. That, that would be textbook. Um, it wasn't a new shock and awe preaching technique that he was using. Um, he was just letting the Spirit speak the truth through him, speak the gospel through him. Uh, and that truth did its work. And if it had been, if it had been watered down or said in a different way, a nicer way, it, it wouldn't have had the same effect, you know? Um, we see a similar speech from Stephen in Acts, and it had a completely different reaction to it um, because of, I mean, the word was not different. It was the people's hearts, whether they were ready to receive that or not, um, and letting the gospel do its work. Um, you know, I don't know, other than Paul, um, who among those that stoned Stephen ever received the gospel. Um, but Stephen trusted the truth, and he spoke it knowing that that could be the outcome for him. And Peter did the same. They just had different outcomes at that point in time. Um, and I guess overall, 
uh, again, the point I'm trying to make just in this message is that, you know, the, we know that the truth is a seed, the gospel is a seed. Um, and if there's suitable ground for it to grow in, um, it will. Amen.